Welcome to another episode of the Uncensored Truth Podcast. I'm your brother, Oga, from Hip Hop News Uncensored. And sitting across from me is my co-host. What it do? What's good? It's your brother, Sam Ant, Viral Hip Hop News. We're in the building. Yeah. Tuesday, another edition of the Uncensored Truth Podcast. Oh, yeah. God. What's good, my brother? What it do, man, in the building. Loving the vibe, loving the beats. My man, Maz, in the building. I can go into the description box on YouTube and check him out right now. Happy to be here, man. Happy to be here, man. And always just going to give people, you know, um, the news from the week, man. Just give our perspective on it like we do, man. I can't wait till Monday night. Eagles play the Redskins. We're going to do something special for the people that night, so I can't wait. Man. That should be a good time, man. We, we've been looking forward to this one because our teams are kind of good, but they ask at the same time. So we're going to have fun. Let me say something real quick, because I'd be remiss if I don't. Ooh. 11 years to this day, my man Sean oh, yeah, Taylor, y'all no see? Yes, sir. Y'all see this right here? He passed away. Real, real tragic situation down mm -hmm. in Florida, man. One of my favorite, my favorite all-time football player. He did it the right way. Mm -hmm. Revolutionized the game. Like I was saying real quick on my IG, same age as me. You know what I mean? Had a daughter. I had a son at the time. So I was closely related. And he played for my squad, man. So right. rest in peace, Sean Taylor. Rest in power to the greatest strong safety of all time. Yeah, man. Definitely truly missed, man. Definitely a sad situation there. But you're listening to the Uncensored Truth Podcast Live with your brother, Old God and Sam, man. Banging all the way in your speakers all over the world, wherever you're at. If you're listening on YouTube, do me a favor. Hit the like button and make sure that you share this video sam man sam man we got to talk about this joint again man once again you know what i mean our boy who would that be go hard boy like i said not for a minute boy Ooh. yeah well, 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 old guys bopping to the beat uh, y'all can listen to us the raw uncut yeah. uncensored truth all the way on spotify google play itunes all the major online outlets we see the negativity we see the haters if you want to really get it raw and uncut yes, go listen to us over there we'll get what you say what you say yeah typing and scratching away Mike Tyson's on the YouTube fingers. <laughs> yes, Fuck out of here. Fuck boys. But yeah, man. Yeah, Sam, man, you want to start this thing off with the Meek Mill. You dropped the video, mm -hmm. you know, um, on Viral. Shout out to Viral Hip Hop News. If you're not subscribed to that channel, do that right now. Um, Meek Mill pretty much dropped the video, you know, um, on IG, a little trailer. We talked about, you know, some um, pretty much um, probation reform, prison reform. For people saying it's not fair that people you know um, are targeted because of their skin color and unfair unjust treatment we know you know the whole nine yards with that um a lot of people you know um you know gave you a lot of criticism you said you know um you clear to uh you know you want to clear you know go at a couple people man go ahead man do you think it's just funny to me because people and it's the thing is we talked about this though our very first reaction to the video was what's up with this there has to be more to this story facts we can't have this dude on here saying this without there being some kind of agenda. And this is what the premise was we were going to go on here. This crab in a barrel like mentality that so much of us are on mm -hmm. because we all are so conscious and so far in truth, but we don't really understand it subconsciously. We are the ones that tear each other down, but we'll get into that. Mm -hmm. So ready for us to go, nah, he ain't with it. Nah, he's the cops. Nah, it is an agenda behind it. A black person can't do something positive without there being a white battery behind his back. We can't not do anything Damn. without massa being behind us. You know that don't go down. Nah, not here. Mm -hmm. We the press ones. We the ones here. We the ones here. We will continue to be stuck against who we are. And we conscious at the same time. We can't move forward. We forget about the fact that this brother's been sitting in probation for half his fucking life. More than probably most of them brothers sitting there, Mike Tyson in the way have been through to talk about that. And then he's sitting here having a voice for the people still incarcerated that aren't Meek Mill when he could easily be still talking about the Miley's, talking about the Percocets, talking about this, talking about that. Now, we're not saying that Meek Mill right. is holier than thou. We've right. criticized him and his actions and his moves on his podcast numerous of times because we're objective. But when he does something positive, when he has a platform where he's putting his probably his own dollar toward a situation, going against something that he's going through currently and helping brothers that don't have a voice. Why the fuck are we criticizing as opposed to helping and learning more about this movement? But we're so quick to Mike Tyson. Well, the thing is, Sam, man, I think, people, like I said, I always understood why people was going to come with that. And I told you, I warned you, I was like, yo. People are going to be like, yo, some type of agenda behind this. Why is he doing this? Because there's been people in the past that have been brought, you know, and paid for 
And no matter how they sounded, no matter what they were going through at the time, they were, you know, um, being paid. And you got to always look at who's funding it and what their agenda is with this situation. So I understand. I don't agree with, you know, them criticizing, but I understand why they're doing it, because a lot of bad apples have spoiled it, you know, uh, for the bunch when it comes to um, situations like that, especially uh, prison reform like that thing is a, a, a multi-trillion dollar business, mm -hmm. you know, each and every year is quotas that got to be made. And, you know, uh, I don't think anybody just going to be able to change it with videos and even a little movement that they got. But I do salute it. And I do think that is needed. And I, I don't think that is um, any agenda behind that. I think that he's truly passionate about it and willing to put and use his money, fame and influence, you know, to actually at least try to make change. I think, you know, he's on his political, you know, uh, Malcolm X, whatever you want to say. You know, joint. And definitely. I couldn't agree more with you, oh God. We always got to look at it, the situation from a third eye, from a different perspective, because we've often been duped and often been hit with the business, you know what I mean? Words often when it came to things that often affected our community. Mm -hmm. But we can't automatically jump to conclusion and think everyone out there is on that agenda. Even if you may feel that way, hold that comment until further information and further you do further. Um, conclusions on what's going on for real before you go and jump to a conclusion and tear a brother completely down that's been sitting behind bars, been sitting in the prison system for all these years and not giving him a proper chance. I think we're very dangerous in how we pull triggers too fast, too often without doing proper research on our own people right. instead of just sitting back and going, okay, yeah, this might be some fuck shit, but let me hold off. Let me hold off and not show them. Let me just chill and wait. But we the ones gassing this shit. This is fake. This is fraud. He's a cop. He's this. He's that. I don't know no police sitting behind bars that nah, I don't I don't know. Everything Meek Mill said was 100 percent accurate. You know, what I mean, um, I think that people are, you know, um, going overboard with it. And only time is going to tell what exactly is going to be the outcome, what they are trying to do. You know, what I mean, Meek Mill. But hopefully, you know, um, he's successful at his endeavor. That's all I can say about that. Facts. And yeah, we'll see. Yes, sir. But you're tuned into the Uncensored Truth Podcast with your brother, Oh God, and Sam, man. We want to encourage everybody listening, all the fans and people just that's going to um, come along and listen to this to hit the like button for us. And please go ahead and share this video. All right. We got another update with the Takash 6 9 situation. I know y'all love hearing about this. So let's you know, update all, the people, you know, once again. Um, Apparently, an ex-crew member reportedly snitches on 6 9 and... Trey, but now, um, according to the Vulture, um, a former crew member in Treyway allegedly snitched on Takash Six Nine along with the other members that were associated with the rapper Treyway and a couple of the other guys. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Assistant U.S. Attorney Michael Longyear reported, um, revealed that a confidential informant captured recorded moments that are going to be used against the Brooklyn rapper in court. Along with that, it's revealed that Takash's social media posts will be thoroughly examined as well. Longyear also said that the Barclays shooting that happened down there, that the um was allegedly, you know, um, rap was allegedly tied to that as well. So they're going to be pulling uh, footage, documents, and anything they could get. Again, this is by way of the Vulture. This article comes out that says they have an FBI pretty much had an informant that's going to come forward, hence the uh, the RICO case. Man, Sam, man, what do you think about this new report coming out on uh, 6 9 Well, I, I talked about it yesterday on Sam Man Cut briefly, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people are tired of hearing about 6 9 on, on, on the platform. But it's the news, bro. We got to do it. But it's the news, bro. Yeah. We got to do it. Yes, and we do it better than anybody. Yes, sir. So that being said, um, this is fucked up. <laughs> Loyalty is, is nowhere in this situation. Loyalty is nowhere when it comes to the quote-unquote streets in 2018. It's just a different breed, a different era that we live in. And we heard the uh, the tirade. I don't know if you heard this, that Treyway, or shot, excuse me, threw out in the courtroom today. He had a real good quote. He stirred up some stuff in the courtroom. And, Let him know. Yeah. You know what I mean? I got to bring that up because I really don't even remember quoted what he said. Right. But um, I think he, he said something like, uh, we don't bang, ben, we don't fold, you know, it's Treyway. Treyway. You know what I mean? Pretty much saying like, look, you know what I mean? I don't care what situation we in. I'm not snitching. We ain't talking. I'm going on like a G, as we said, what the street code supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, people kind of got on you a little bit. Not a lot about kind of um, giving 6 9 a little bit of a pass, saying that he kind of should just, you know, whatever. It's no really loyalty. But, you know, the street code says different. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't Definitely. agree more. Yeah. But when you got your lawyer in the forefront saying, one, you ain't a gangster <laughs> and yeah. you don't even know these dudes, <laughs> what are you setting this shit up to do to get free? Yeah. You know what I mean? You you don't want to sit in a situation where you about to potentially get your stuff took in jail for years and years to come. He's scared. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong, but you can't throw the loyalty and you can't throw the street at me when 
people in the street right now are throwing money online when they they throwing guns when they throwing this and promoting this when was that ever in the code promoting your own shit and telling on yourself i'm mm-hmm. not sitting yeah, with the real ones aren't not mm-hmm. to that degree and the ones that are real that are doing it they're falling victim to the lights victim to the fame six nine maybe falls in between who knows we mm-hmm. didn't say he was going to snitch. We said what he should do based off of what's going to happen with him. And lo and behold, whether he does it or he doesn't, he's fucked anyway because it was an implant in there anyway. And they probably got conversations, whether those be him just running his mouth and never really being involved. If he said mm-hmm. it, it's incriminating him now. Mm-hmm. Social media bit him on his ass like we told people it would. Right. And it's funny now you can even go through like a list of, you know, um, rappers now who either song lyrics you know, or social media posts are now being gathered up and used as evidence against them, you know, uh, in cases and guys, you know, um, are just loose at the mouth talking about things they've done because it sounds good or whatever. And it goes good and it flows good with the record. But you got to remember, it's like even outside of the courtroom, anything you say or do will and can be used against you maybe not now but at some point you know later on so you know um gang affiliation and stuff like that throwing out that and people who you roll with and then being you know engulfed and actually you know committing uh, it's one thing for a guy to be a rapper and then to talk about all that stuff but he never does nothing he's in hollywood he's just chilling behind the camera you got some rappers like that but you got stuff that's going on where they can point the camera they got wiretaps they got evidence they got all this different thing that say look this dude is really Doing what he says, you can't hide behind, I'm just an entertainer, I'm just a little kid, I was influenced by these gangsters. The FBI has evidence, and that's one thing we know um, we, we're not really dealing with. This is the Fed, this ain't the state case. Come on, man. This is shit that's going to stick. Stay. They got stuff that, you know, usually they, they take years and years to investigate you. You know what I mean? So when they come down on you, people would think that they would just wait, they could have got more, but they got enough in this short period of time. To be able to say, look, we want to get this dude life. And he might get life. Yeah. And no one's wishing that on him. And let me, let me, let's, let's, let me, let's address this real quick. Yes, sir. The whole kid thing. Right? Yeah. Let's address the whole kid thing. <laughs> let's be uncensored for the motherfuckers who think we ain't uncensored, <laughs> right? So we were scared of the shit. Fuck. 22, 22 years old is not a kid to you? I get what they say, like a legal adult. I get what you're saying with a legal adult, but right. let's all go back to 22 real quick. And let's really go back to saying, okay, it's 35 and 36 and 40 year old motherfuckers really mad at this 22 year old kid for having rainbow hair and doing it. I'm not again. justifying what he's doing. And then a lot of people I heard throughout, and maybe not on our stuff, but I've heard this. If Chief Keith is 24 and, and he's 22 and Chief Keith's a man, then 6ix9ine's a man. Nah, Chief Keith's a kid too. He's allowed to make fucking mistakes. Yeah. He's allowed to grow. First off, when we don't have people to properly teach us how to fucking become a man and we have to do it on our own and then do it in front of the lights, what do you expect us to do? Who are our teachers? A lot of these people. Who Same are man, you making excuses for six and nine? Hell no. Okay. He made his bed, he's gonna land it, and he's probably gonna do life for it. I'm trying to talk on the grander scheme of things and make this a learning lesson as opposed to a fucking circus like a lot of these other platforms are doing. Yeah, no doubt. I don't care a fuck if he's going whether he does life, whether he gets out, whether he's a snitch, whether he's this. The people and the young people that looked up to him, the babies that fucking buy his albums and look up and do all this shit, not the grownups that are fucking briefing on him because he has rainbow hair. Mm -hmm. The ones that are really investing on him, the young, they're seeing the moves that he made and seeing how he lit up in a year off the fame. And they're going to replicate this, not realizing underneath it, he had a fed in his team. He had people maybe plotting to kill him. He was involved in shit that he may not be involved in. Let's look at this as a learning lesson. Fuck the six nine person. Let's mm-hmm. look at this as a twenty two year old kid who thought it was great to uh, put on a shine. It wasn't, and now he's sitting behind bars for federal time. This could be anybody right now. Black, white, what? Black, yeah, nah, real Hispanic, talk. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah. But so, do you want- think that um, with this whole thing with six nine, do you think that um, at some point, you know, um, is there a possibility of him ever getting out? You think that he could beat this case? Mm-hmm. Do you think, or you think that it's like slam? He's gonna do at least ten. He's do doing it. I, I don't wish it on him, but he's doing at least ten. Now, what people are saying also, I want to ask you about this as well. Um, they were saying that he's going to snitch, but they're going to put him in witness protection. What do you think about that aspect? They saying you know, because you know, witness protection obviously identity gets taken. You know what I mean? You go live in another area, so his career probably is done. He can't done come anyway. out no more. It's yeah, done now. Yeah. What do you think about those um, allegations or rumors at this point? Who knows. I don't mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. I don't really have it. If he if he goes into witness protection, where are they going to move him to that he ain't going to be known? He's toward the world right now. <laughs> he has 6'9 over his fucking face. 
<laughs> witnesses, how are they going to protect that witness? That'd be right. real fun to see. I don't know if he'll ever get protection, but on talking about his career, he dropped his album today, Dummy Boy. And I think he just did that as that might be in a remembrance album because I don't know. I don't see this as a, a optimistic situation like we've seen our man um, Bobby Smurder on his way out of jail yeah. and a learning lesson. I Definitely, see them yeah. making an example out of him and a lot of the bullshit that he said on social media and this or that or the third, whether people want to believe it or not, it's incriminating him now. It oh is, yeah, it's a fact. It's smoking him. The Breakfast Club interview. This, that. Yeah. It's all coming up, and it's is is tearing him up right now. And man, what do you think about um, a lot of people saying the academic situation? Mm. What do you think about him? Um, you know, pretty much broadcasting this so closely, being as though they had a personal relationship. Do you think he, that, that crosses the line with this, or does it not cross the line? Since because it's always was an artist media relationship there no matter what they done together that was always still there do you think academics crosses the line by reporting on everything that um you know happened with six mile like that or no he has to do his job he's still media and he's still news it would be kind of hard though with a friend i wouldn't i me personally wouldn't put out as much information as he does i don't put out a lot right. of information that he does i'm not thoroughly step by step involved I, I don't feel comfortable putting out a lot of shit we do but we're news you remind me of that daily we're news you gotta put some of this shit out all right yeah, i got you i got yeah. you because it's not comfortable not for either one of us because we live under a whole different you know what i mean but mm -hmm. we're sitting here doing what we do so we're gonna do it better than anybody mm -hmm. that being said academics he is busy on takash every step of the way he he also alluded to him possibly having an interview with shoddy they reached out he didn't want to do it Wow, really? Yeah, he didn't want to do it because he didn't want to do it without their lawyer involved. So people are trying. It seems like he's trying to distance himself while still keeping involved in the situation. And you hear a lot of people with their gripes on academics and things like that. My only response to them is if you don't like them so much, why do you listen and why do you watch? Right. That's all I can say. Like, exactly. If you continue to gas him, then he's going to continue to do what he's doing. And if he's yeah. doing the views, I mean, why stop? We don't want to talk about him, but when you sit there and you see the response from the conversation and it's kind of hard pressed when new things come out not to have a conversation about it it Facts. only makes sense yeah no you doubt know. man but you tuned into the uncensored truth podcast with your brother oh god and sam man from viral hip-hop news sitting over there everybody listening on youtube i need y'all to do me a favor hit the like button and make sure that you share this video on the news man i don't know if you've seen this earlier though sam man Dame Dash and Lee Daniels. I was going to um, tell you about that. Yeah, settled that $5 million um, lawsuit over the movie loan. Yep. You know, um, which is dope. Well, it pretty much appears like he's pretty much been paid back, you know, um, if not some, all of the cash. You know what I mean? So he kind of fell back. What do you think about that, Sam? Matt? Well, for those who people who don't know, the backstory is Dame Dash and Lee Daniels. They had a, an agreement where he previously, Dame Dash, that being said, um, invested $2 million for a Richard Pryor movie that Lee Daniels was working on with the agreement that the music mogul will receive his credit and executive producer as well as five percent of daniel's back profits for the film daniel's obviously did not he reneged on those agreements we all seen the notorious video right now yeah. with dame dash <laughs> digging paul's in lee daniels yeah you know i mean mm -hmm. but uh now it seems like all things are good everything's well they each also paid each other um separate attorney fees so it's all peace it's all love shout out to dame dash but for always keeping it real always keeping it a buck and even though that was seemingly a very heated negotiation and, and legal battle and dane was obviously hurt personally in that situation because he felt like he did something mm -hmm. on the strength you know, and wasn't returned and was done dirty and we can obviously see how that would piss anybody off especially when you do it in kind heart so i'm glad that everything is done i'm glad that dame could just look at it and squash it i'm glad that lee did the right thing i would love to see the richard Pryor movie come out yeah mike epps would kill a role it, it, it would be an amazing story so I would love to see where that goes. We would love to talk to Dame Dash and have a conversation with him about it. I mean, yes, what do you think about that? Um, I think it's dope, man, that he did, you know, um, pay up, you know what I mean? Whatever he owed and they were able to settle, you know, their differences. Obviously, Lee Daniels, you know, um, is talented as well as Dame. So hopefully they can come together and put that, you know, a thing out or maybe, maybe, maybe they even work together. I doubt it in the future. But, you know, this is, you know, anytime people can resolve it, I think that's a good thing, man. Definitely shout out to Dame Dash and Lee Daniels. Indeed, indeed, man. Yes, I couldn't sir. agree more. Yes, sir. But you're tuned into the Uncensored Truth Podcast with your brother, Old God, and Sam Ant on Hip Hop News Uncensored Viral Hip Hop News. And wherever else you're listening, please hit the like button and share the video if you're listening on 
you too. So yeah, man. Um, Monday, Monday we're gonna probably be coming live. You know, um, pause and um, you know, the Redskins, Eagles game, man. The Eagles, our Eagles fans out there, I see y'all in the comment section. Shout out to y'all out there. We're gonna go and take sole possession of first place this week. The Philadelphia Eagles. What are they playing at in DC? I'm not sure what it. Maybe in Philly. I'm not. I don't think it matters. Who do you think is gonna win that game? I think honestly? the Redskins are gonna win. Why? Because because of, of who? Because of who? Not who? Anderson? I mean, uh, Peterson? Because mm -hmm. of McCoy? Who? Because of the Eagles being so ass. Come and this on, is the thing. man. Nah. Y'all can't stop the run. Get the fuck out of here. Colt McCoy can at least pass the ball 15 yards field down, unlike Alex Smith, this who's king of check down. This guy's crazy. So hopefully Doxon can get open one or two times and we can throw it back. Hopefully we get an interception, even though I fuck with Carson Wentz. I like Carson Wentz. Best player on your team, but you're not protecting him right now. He's on the ground every five minutes. We was down. The leg is sore. Right, right. It's gonna be fun, man. We was down nineteen to three. It was looking real bad again, but we rallied to a three and, I think and seven giants. It doesn't matter. Okay, it's the NFC East game. Okay, you know what I mean. We're down. We rallied, and I think yeah. you know now we're starting to get some momentum. People are getting confident. Right. You know what I mean. And uh, people are starting to come back off injury. You know, hopefully, and you know, um, we got a lot. Like I said, we got a lot of guys, especially in the secondary, that are new yeah. off the practice squad. So it's just like you know, um, either they step up. You know or not, but I think we got other pieces in place. We're gonna go down and uh, win that game this week. I don't think those skins have it. They're old. They're washed up. You know, I do like your tight end. I love his tenacity. I think y'all arrived Jordan at that Reed. game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jordan Reed. I love that tenacity because that was some bullshit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I should have got that penalty, but y'all lost. Yeah, it is what it is. To the we, Dallas Cowboys. I mean, y'all lost a couple weeks prior. And it's we all cool, but y'all lost. We, we beat them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So first, yeah, first place. Y'all supposed to take control of it right. and win the games you're supposed to win if you're going to be the team that you think you're going to be. Well, oh God, CEO of Hip Hop News and Sense and the King <laughs> and Excuses for the bum ass birds. He talked about it <laughs> a million Super Bowl times. Last year. <sighs> still, the, uh, still the undisputed champions until the season's over. But go ahead, man. I can't say none of that. Um, that being said, <laughs> our lines tore up, our lines decimated, <laughs> our running backs are tore up. Adrian Peterson is 39 years old. He's 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 getting he's getting tired. We appreciate him, but he's getting tired. Our team is fucking tart, man. It is what it is. We're gonna watch two bum squads go at it, but we're gonna have fun doing it. Like yeah. Oga said, we probably be on the uncensored truth. Yes, yeah, sir. Watching and, and having having a ball and being fools, man. So come check us out on there. Indeed, indeed. Oh God, real quick, man. Did you see um and this is just us kind of yeah, no, chatty no. panning. Did you see Black China and that whole shit with Nigeria and how she went out there to promote a skin lightning cream that she's promoting or something wild, man? Did you check that out? Did you hear about that? I did see that. Um, I think I heard her say that she doesn't actually use it herself, which is I think kind of crazy. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, I think that's um interesting. I think that is uh very interesting that she's selling that. And I think, you know, um interesting. How I'm do saying. you think you how how does it how does it make you feel to her to go to Nigeria, to Africa to launch and promote this? Like what kind of I think that it, it just goes to, you know, um it, it points to that there's definitely an issue and a problem. You know that uh, people, um, a lot of people, you know, think that um, being lighter or whiter, you know, um, they can be more successful or you know makes them better, you know, by some chance. And why are you? Why would you want to lighten your skin? But then you, then people will say you got people who are actually trying to darken their skin by sitting in the sun with tan and everything. But um, Nigeria, I think for her to go, it's almost like going over there with drugs. You know what I mean? At some point, you know what I mean? Is it's that is that toxic to go over there and try to um, make these people like for what? Mm -hmm. What are you telling these people who are beautiful, dark, you know, people, intelligent people from Nigeria? Why do they have to lighten their skin? Like, what message are you sending, you know, to the people to do that? So, you know, um, I don't know, man. I definitely don't agree with it. I think it's silly. I think she should definitely pull out of that campaign. Um, but I doubt it. She's probably making some great money doing that. She's probably, well, she sold her soul a long time ago. And we're not going to bash the I mean, I woman because that's not what we do here. But to mm -hmm. go out there and to promote skin lightening cream in Africa. Of, with people who are light uh, or obviously darker in complexion, beautifully dark, mm -hmm. and try to promote that, that's a slap in the face of the culture all day long, no matter how you shape it. Yeah. Just slap. Yeah. And it's like, yo, go back to America with that. You yes. know what I mean? Don't try to poison these people with that. But, you know, it is what it is. He's been receiving, receiving a lot of backlash from that. So, deservingly so. Yeah. Yeah. So, that's just a bad move, man. The people don't be thinking, man. Another, another, another black eye for us, man. Definitely. But yeah, you know, yeah. it is what it is, man. We do our part to try to, you know, highlight the, the great things as well. We're here on the Uncensored the True Podcast with your brother, Old God and Sam Matt. A beautiful, beautiful Tuesday, man. We going in, man. Every day of the week, we'll be giving y'all nonstop 
content. Make sure y'all join in and subscribe to Hip Hop News Uncensored because Friday night at 8 p.m. on Hip Hop Uncensored, we're going to be doing um, a live podcast, live show, interacting with the people, calling out area codes, you know, um, even um, interacting with comments and stuff like that. So 8 p.m. That show's going to be 8 p.m. live on Hip Hop Uncensored every Friday. Definitely. The staple on the, the podcast. Yeah, I mean, this is what we do. Yes. We're the best at it. And we enjoy it. Also, check us out on Thursday evenings, anywhere between 6 and 8. We ain't yeah. set up a time yet, an official time, but we will be live on the Institute Podcast and give you guys the latest news, stories, bug out with the people, do what we do, enjoy our time. Shout out to everyone out there reaching out to us, all the great bills we have going on. 2019 is shaping up yeah. to be an absolute monster. Yes. Please know that now. We appreciate each and every one of you support. Shout out to each and every one of the platforms that Oh God and I run yeah. because we are the content kings and we are showing you slowly but surely why indeed we cash tag ourselves that. So yes, sir. thank you to the people. Thank you to Oh God. Shout out to the team at HipHopUN.com. Shout out to our families. Yes, That's sir. all I got, Oh God. That's all I got over here as well, man. You have tuned into another episode of the Uncensored Truth Podcast. We are out. Peace. Peace.